Hello, 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 guys! Welcome to this new edition of Mind Podcast. This is Adit Kapadia welcoming you on yet another fascinating week. And together with me, joining us, our returning champion at Mind Podcast, my good friend, psychologist par excellence, analyst, and you know everyone with all coming to us with all the good stories, gossip from Gujarat is uh, Jay Mrug. Hello, hi, Jay. Hi. Good. Welcome, everyone. How are you doing? All good, all good. It's been a nice, refreshing trip. Learned a lot. I would always say we go there to learn on the ground. Absolutely, so. absolutely. There is, there is no. I mean, I, I should have a piece on Gujarat uh, coming up pretty soon because I haven't written in a long time and uh, I have to write on Gujarat. But you know, there is nothing like quite Gujarat. I mean, I was trying. I was when I was writing my piece because the reason I say it is, it is such a simplistic thought of state with such a complicated electoral. Uh, uh, yeah. history it's a and layer of the land which actually often varies across every two three districts exactly so in yeah. a way gujarat might be taken as a up or as complicated as bihar or something like that but people you know people people have started there is a recency bias also in how people look at that and we'll yeah. talk about that so so this election this this podcast is going to be uh, we'll we'll talk about the current news a little bit of the current news as well but essentially it's going to be gujarat elections himachal elections uh, our preview i mean we talked a little bit about the gujarat and the us midterms in the last podcast but this is going to be a cephalogical preview it's going to be a political preview and it's going to be a a a, 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 a vishleshan of on the uh, jay's on the ground reports and findings as well so i i like that word vishleshan you know it lends a little bit of heft to <laughs> our our discussion very sage like <laughs> तो है ही ना मतलब हम हम लोग भी थोड़ी ऋषि आवर पेशेंस इज सेज लाइक वेन वी लुक एट नंबर्स सो आफ्टर दैट सेल्फ सेल्फ एग्रेनाइजिंग पैट ऑन द बैक मोमेंट लेट्स 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 गो स्ट्रेट इनटू इट राइट इट्स 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 एन अमेजिंग अमेजिंग इलेक्शन सो आई एम गोइंग टू आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर सम शेयर माय स्क्रीन एंड शो एवरीवन what to expect with gujarat right and and essentially uh, uh, while before i share my screen though i was just thinking jay if you can just give a 30 second overview of what you have seen and then we'll get into the seats i i think uh, I, i'll put it in three or four bullets first uh, there are loyalist voters of the bjp and the congress there is a hardcore loyal cadre that does not desert the party this is very mm. clear what were the mm. polls say about the congress what do they say about the bjp Hmm. That's point number one. Point number two: the AP has a phenomenal rural reach in Gujarat. It's very surprising in Gujarat. Uh, you might not be off the mark to call it a more rural party than an urban party, but that is yeah. what it appears to be. So yeah. the, the the reason why Jay mentions this is because uh, th- uh, two months ago uh, when I was in Gujarat, one thing I had noticed that there were fields in certain parts of Gujarat where I saw AAP's banners not uh, posted but hand painted, right? So I was just yeah. curious because a lot of and I I'm not saying that this is a phenomenon yet, right? I think yeah. AAP might will go into that. AAP might still be restricted in terms of seat gains and stuff, but. what we were noticing was that it was not as urban of a phenomenon i think bjp still remains the party of urban gujarat with aap vying for congress with urban gujarat but in rural gujarat they are trying to see if they can replace congress in certain seats or try to get some votes from bjp in certain seats and is that the sense you got yes quite a bit i mean in rural gujarat in fact it was the uh, an all out battle for for hmm. the votes in, in the terms of that the fact that the ap was attacking the supporters of both the congress i mean trying to get the base by what i mean by attacking of both the congress and the bjp it also had sort of uh, created a class sort of an education to the rural mass i mean what i mean is not a leftist education but a class sort of education suddenly we found people talking numbers of gst inflation in villages you know which had hmm. uh, Uh, uh you know which did not even have completely concrete housing so uh, that's a sort of new phenomenon you know campaigns going out through instagram voters being alerted through whatsapp groups mm-hmm. uh, a reach which is across stretching right from lewa patidar to darjis kathi kathi darbars i mean it it was something unique one had to see it to believe it 
Fascinating, fascinating. So let's let's you know without much without further ado, let's let's get into let's get into the into the crux of it all, right? So yeah. Gujarat itself, you know, is a complicated state divided into many layers, right? You have the North Gujarat Belt, you have the Central yeah. Gujarat, which has which has probably some of the highest chunk of seats. In, yeah. in in terms of density, right? Because Ahmedabad and Baroda being there, then you have South yeah. Gujarat and then you have Saurashtra. So those those right. are the four regions, and you know right. there are three major players this time. Uh, if you were under a rock all this time, <laughs> one is the BJP. The other, I'm I'm going through Wikipedia because it's just easier to navigate through. One is the BJP right. fighting on all 182 seats. Um, right. Congress is this time they have not fought. About giving NCP three or four seats, वरना हमेशा झगड़ते हैं. But Congress and NCP are fighting on uh, you know 182 seats together. And Aam Aadmi Party says they are fighting uh, fighting on 182 seats. But there was this whole debate one. because uh, uh, there is one independent, and then earlier Chotu Bai Vasawa was in supposed to be in alliance with Aam Aadmi Party BTP. But I don't know how that has worked because right now it seems Mr. Vasawa is in fight with his own son. He is, he, and he is the BTP also on its own. The AP will be one eighty one. Surat each candidate out, and whatever they support and independent there, that that's all Correct. it's going to be like. Mm-hmm. Correct. So, so let's let's talk a little bit about the phase. So, if you want to talk uh, about the phase, yeah. uh, Jay, a little bit, uh, yeah. what yeah. can we expect in phase one, and what can we expect in phase two? Yeah. So, phase one is Kutch, Saurashtra, and South Gujarat. Mm-hmm. Uh, phase one, I believe, the Kutch, Saurashtra, the fifty four seats. Hmm. uh along with pockets of the south hmm. or even to a great extent the entire south hmm. phase 1 therefore is the real battleground hmm. it is here where you know we 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 can really look forward to spoilers and upsets hmm. both hmm. Hmm. uh you know is phase 1 you start right from kutch in the north hmm. right uh now the very interesting about 3 months ago uh, hmm. mr kejriwal goes to bhachao in kutch hmm. Hmm. and uh, he spends 15 to 20 minutes attacking private schools <laughs> you know i i couldn't connect why this was happening and when we hmm. did our field trip you know we realized that the people on the roadside stalls who were giving us accounts of their monthly expenditures hmm. were actually saying that this is what a private school fee is like and if i have two to three children and a 300 or 500 rupee daily earning capacity i can afford that school so mm-hmm. uh, these are areas where due to a novelty of issues uh, and a stagnancy of candidates mm. okay we can see surprises and spoilers what do i mean by stagnancy of candidates mm. like in kutch for example uh, you know uh, 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 it has a fair sprinkling of the minority population mm. now it's not that they've traditionally voted in a polarized fashion a mm. lot of things here and in pockets of saurashtra like bakaner also mm. it depends mm. on the local equations of the candidate mm. so mm. many of them have voted for bjp candidates you know they locally they are just called laghumati the minority mm. right and the, yeah. so the laghumati is gone with the bjp if the candidate in the bjp is an ex congress person having a good equation so nibabe nacharya the outgoing mla from bhuj she is an ex congress now bjp now bjp has dropped her replaced her with a mm. patel but there are these equations at play you know where they're not totally polarized hmm. right so now in such a field you know hmm. uh, there is talk of people wanting to experiment with a new party or some spoilers you know going away from the congress and the bjp to the new party this is going to make phase one very exciting Absolutely. so what happens is on the evening of polling when the polling closes on phase one whatever whatever parties the bjp the congress ap whatever they gather internally as their own input at the end of the day of polling their own internal exit poll hmm. will actually create a lot of frenzied activity in the next 3 days for the phase 2 <laughs> truly <laughs> yeah because this is truly where it's happening the hmm. saurashtra and south gujarat north and central are still not as much of a battleground the rules are more or less clear the consensus is clear but south gujarat and kutch saurashtra is where the entire churn is so hmm. uh, uh, you know I, i think that's that's where the battleground is so that's the that's where the battle is. Yeah. Absolutely no no I agree with you I agree with you because that 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 is that is a genuine fear that a lot of uh, uh, people from the BJP side have the about South Saurashtra I mean South Gujarat and Saurashtra because S- S- Congress has traditionally been strong in Saurashtra you know last time actually it was a basically close to fifty fifty even split 
in the Saurashtra region. And then, you know, BJP ran up the uh, uh, numbers in urban Gujarat. But then you have the whole Surat phenomenon where because of the past agitation, Amadmi Party did do well and some. Now, what is interesting is, Typically, BJP was seen as someone who gets Patidar votes and so forth. And then, you know, Congress was always try for the Kham Alliance and stuff. This time, it means it seems like BJP has also done an outreach to other castes beyond their, you know, right. traditional base. Uh, you have, you know, the Kshatriya vote or the Thakur vote and so forth that the BJP has been quoting. Right. Yeah. Now, what, what they have to be careful is. For them to win, it cannot be at the cost of losing the Patel yeah. vote. Right. It yeah. can't be a counterbalance. But... Outreach can also happen because they have, might have seen some erosion of their old, you know, sort of thing. And I think the base in the upper caste uh, uh, vote of the BJP remains intact. It's probably BJP is looking to maximize their strike rate, right? So would I be uh, unfair in sort of drawing that conclusion? Uh, yeah, the BJP is trying to maximize its strike rate, but with a mm. variety of strategies, right? Okay. And mm. in some places it has gone for candidates who can woo the most of the non-BJP aligned communities. Okay. Right? So for example, in Rajkot East, uh, the AP candidate is Rahul Bhua, who is a partidar, and it is supposed to be a partidar dominant seat. Hmm. Uh, the Congress has given a ticket, uh, the BJP has given a ticket to Umesh Kangad, who is an Ahir. Mm-hmm. Ahir hardly have a <laughs> following in that constituency. So now, the BJP strategy is can a non-party that align mm-hmm. a lot of the non-BJP voting communities along with himself? Similarly, mm-hmm. in Palanpur, they have given a ticket to a Brahmin. Now, it's not that there is a big Brahmin domination over there, but the fact is that that candidate has a good utna batna relationship with all the other communities which are non-party that. Right. So, BJP is like trying hard to outreach that particular section of voters So it Mm -hmm. can balance off the possible. See, one thing has become very clear. Now, though it's not an explicitly stated fact, even by the BJP, their chief minister is a party dar. The Mm -hmm. book is Patel. But Mm -hmm. this thing has become very clear Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. the economically hurt party dars of South Gujarat, of Surat, Mm -hmm. are the ones which are the economic force behind the AAP. Hmm. That's me. They've been fueling the AAP's campaign in Saurashtra, in pockets of North Gujarat, right? And that's where this whole confusion has come in. Hmm. The BJP has read it right. They've hmm. read the right that hmm. there is an economic discontent. They are fueling the campaign. And therefore, the BJP is trying hard to get those non BJP voters aligned with itself. In fact, my taxi hmm. driver told me something very nice. He's from North Gujarat, from Palanpur, hmm. Mehsana. He said, look, even these people, the party does have a dilemma, you know, which <laughs> neither them nor the BJP are able to state openly. So mm. I'll tell you in Gujarati and you can translate it. Yeah. So he said, Bhajap, now all the Kadwa party are in the match. Now, if someone public to go to the public, they don't have so that's the dilemma. <laughs> so the dilemma, so what Jay is trying to say is what they said was that the BJP happens to be the party of default in, you know, in, in for a lot of Kadwa Patels. And yeah. uh, the reason the term Ma was used was basically that, you know, the mothership or something and no one is going to abuse, you know, or go publicly take a stance. Now, again, this is all anecdotal thing and we can only assume what what can happen. But the fact is, I think BJP themselves have recognized and you have to also understand what, at what base BJP operates, right? I think BJP operates at a 40 to 45 percent base in Gujarat. The swing vote in Gujarat is probably 5 to 6 percent and BJP right. can get to 49. At most, in some elections, it has, you know, gone about 10, 11 percent. But 40 to 42 percent is very high in a two-cornered fight. In a three-cornered fight, if you get 40-42%, you are looking yeah. at a two-thirds majority. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Easy. In a true three-cornered fight. Now, Easy. here is where it interestingly it comes. So, the BJP would want AAP to play the spoiler f- till about 12-15%. to 15%, But we have seen ample evidence that if it goes above 15%, sometimes it is eroding BJP's base. And suddenly then it starts getting a little muddled. Right. Yeah. One thing I think we can be for sure that Congress is beyond Congress is not even in the f- in the frame uh, for the except for 30, 35 seats. Am I, am I correct in saying that? Or do you think Congress is in relevance in more than that? 
No, you you'd be right. That number thirty five may at max stretch to forty, not beyond mm. that. The mm. Congress is retaining some of its loyal cadre vote in Central mm. North Gujarat, pockets of Saurashtra also. For example, mm. in Bakaner, Mohammad Pir Jada is a good candidate. They are retaining votes there, you know. Uh, mm. But other than those pockets and Central and North, yeah, yeah. To Chaudhary from Khet Brahma, there is especially across Saurashtra and South, there mm. is a visible. Depress, uh, you know, deprecation of the Congress vote, and that seems to be adding to the AAP. Yeah, right? because Rajkot normally I would have uh, Rajkot is a swing district. I would yeah. uh, uh, expect Congress to do a little bit better, even in Ahmedabad, which has a twenty, yeah. you know, the highest chunk of votes in uh, any district in uh, in Gujarat, twenty one seats right. more than I think twelve percent essentially. And if yeah. you add Gandhinagar, it gets close to thirty. If you you know yeah. uh, add all that, so twenty. 27, 28, I'm sorry. But yes. even there, Congress would get at least, you know, 5, 6 in Ahmedabad and 2 or 3 they would pick up in Gandhinagar. So, but this time it doesn't even look like it will cross 3 or 4 in those regions. Yeah, yeah. We, we spoke to a lot of political, you know, researchers on the ground. Hmm. What was very clear is that the Congress was now focusing on 5 or 6 seats per region where it can really do well. Hmm. Hmm. For example, Somnath, hmm. Bakane. Right, mm. maybe one seat in Kutch, yeah. Palanpur, right? Uh, uh, three Kipur. seats in three to four seats in the Ahmedabad Gandhinagar belt. There were, right. you know, so Jamalpur, Khadiya, Daryapur, all that. Yeah, correct. So, we're very clear that these are 20 25 seats we are going to focus on. These mm. are some other 10 15 seats that we are in a fight, and the rest is like, okay, gone, you know. Sort of. mm. But I tell you one thing, I tell you one thing. Um, mm. Uh, there's a very twisted message we got from a very local Congress worker we met in Ahmedabad. Hmm. Uh, you know, he said, uh, So you need a hand to hold the broom. <laughs> <laughs> This is this is why I love Indian politics. There is nothing more metaphorical ever than Indian politics. Yeah, yeah, very metaphorical. So he yeah. was very clear. That in the end, you know, we might just go and give them something, you know. But mm. one thing that I am something that's clearly not been captured in the mainstream media in in uh, in mm. a lot of the political talk mm. is perhaps perhaps there could be a silent understanding between the AP and the Congress. Hmm. Uh, across North Gujarat, when I traveled, hmm. okay, uh, we didn't find the AAP. We were a little curious. You know, hmm. Why is hmm. this happening? Like, there is BJP, we finding a loyal cadre vote. There is the hmm. Congress party, we find a loyal cadre vote for the Congress. There's no AAP at all. Hmm. I mean, and hmm. we, when we remind people, we try to get the assess the brand recall. We tell them, you know, do you know of this party? Just because, ah, che, 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 gomda hmm. So they're saying that it's not near my house, somewhere else it is there. Mm-hmm. But when we travel across everywhere, we don't find it very voluble, very talkative. Mm-hmm. When you mm-hmm. enter Saurashtra, Dasada, mm-hmm. the first assembly seat in Surendagar district in Saurashtra, the moment you enter there from North Gujarat, you find Ghadu all across. Mm-hmm. So one thing that we found that in North Gujarat, there were committed Congress cadre. Mm-hmm. I mean, who still said that we have Bhajap ne hara uja, amne Congress. Ne we, we want to defeat the BJP, we will give votes to the Congress. Mm-hmm. So maybe the AAP has also consciously, without much of a bravado, much of a talk, started conceding some space to the Congress. So you have to see Bharat Singh Solanki's statement that, you know, what's wrong if AAP supports us in all 22 seats? You have to see that statement in this light. So maybe there is a tacit understanding also. Maybe. I, I do not know. There is not, nothing that I can verify. <clears throat> no, that is possible. So that then that remains to be seen that who is AAP really benefiting, right? Because I was I was highlighting a few seats, a uh, uh, few interesting seats where AAP's ca- choice of candidates has been um, uh, has been quite uh, quite interesting because I I don't know what is the ultimate goal here, right? So let me give you an example of like uh, you know Jamalpur Khadia, right? Where it's it's essentially a very narrow seat between um, uh, between Bhushan Bhatt and Imran Khedawala and Imran Khedawala has run very close and there you know it's a significant Muslim population there uh, you know they've swapped it in 2017 uh, Mr. Khedawala won by you know quite a big margin um, 
with ap being there and ap cutting a few votes i think i can we count that as a congress win possibly you know but there is another factor also in jamalpur khadia and daryapur is the aimim because last time aimim had 7% vote share okay. in those seats okay. right so how do how do how do that pans out one thing is for sure where we are looking at the the guards of bjp in the ghatlodias of the at the elis bridge in amdavad i think bjp is going to maximize their vote share the winning margin because i see a lot of split between the congress and the aap there i think bjp will hold i mean and when we say this is why it's significant right i mean look at the elis bridge majority this is this is full disclosure this is my constituency that's why i'm very close, very familiar with it but there is a majority of 54% so out of one yeah i mean 101 lakh 16000 31000 votes so i mean this is very common so this time uh, aap has a guy called parashya so i mean you know things like that so they would do better in 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 those those seats but then you get to the swankaner surendranagar limdi you know badwan all those all those seats and suddenly yeah. now you're looking at swing seats now rajkot Yeah. Rajkot me a lot of uh, people that have been given seats are new newer yeah. people like uh, Darshita Shah a giant physician i think from Rajkot West has been yeah. given uh, he has uh, inherited uh, the seat of Mr Vijay Rupani and Vijay Rupani maintain the tradition that they are giving a giant candidate <laughs> yeah, well, last time there was a whole thing where uh, in Surendra Nagar, uh, uh, Mr. Rupani had to call uh, in the Vadhwan seat uh, uh, that you know that yes, it's not like they have not given a Jain a seat; they are making the Jain a CM of uh, that. But this time, I think there has been more than five or six Jain faces I've seen that they've. who have been given yeah. bjp tickets so it's quite yeah. interesting right now yeah. because i think bjp is also not taking any uh, uh, no bjp boss if you look at the bjp list it is very clear anybody yeah. other than the party that has to be appeased <laughs> it's so simple the formula is so simple Yeah, I mean, I, 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 so I, I don't know. So the, the lot of party dars have also been given, given seats this time, but not as yeah. many as last time. Now one could argue that last time was maybe an overcorrection after the pass movement. One yeah. doesn't know, but that is what they can see. But this, and then when you move to you know Gondal and uh, uh, Jaitpur, that's the Vithal Radhidia, uh, yeah. Radhidia area. That's see, where Gondal and Jaitpur both. I think the Radhidias will deliver for the BJP. Absolutely. That's, I mean, since i got on the ground yeah yeah Th- those those will be delivered i i completely agree with you i think where uh, bjp has to be careful is bhavnagar again the yeah. clash of stalwarts like i yeah. for the for a si- seat as uh, what you am saying the district like bhavnagar the amount of high profile fights that we've seen in bhavnagar over the years you know is been quite quite incredible so we have to see what uh, happens i i don't know uh, where is shakti singh goel fighting this stuff, or if he's even fighting this time uh, uh, the elections no, I, I, don't i don't think, think he is fighting i don't recollect yeah. his name on any I, 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 i didn't see he, he used to usually fight from bhavnagar rural then i think he even tried abdasa once or something i i, I don't know but arjun so modwali is he went to mandvi i, I don't yeah. know why in kach which is far from bhavnagar yeah i didn't Bhavnagar rural is his constancy. Yeah, have, uh, another big, big high-profile bat- battle is between the uh, minister, uh, ex-minister Babu Bokaria and Arjun Modhwaria in Porbandar. That is going to be a particular battle royale. It's a Congress. Uh, I would. It's a Congress-leaning seat, but we'll have to see what uh, what they do there. No, see, what's, what's again very interesting there is the caste mm-hmm. equation the AP has put in place. Uh, the AP candidate is Jivan Jungi, who mm-hmm. is a Koli. Harwa, hmm. okay. Now the B- AAP candidate in Waka Nair is Vikram Sorani, who is the president of the Harwas. Hmm. Okay, the AAP candidate in Bhavnagar, one of the seats of Bhavnagar, is Raju Solanki, who is one of the chiefs of the AAP sects. In fact, a lot of his YouTube videos describe Raju Solanki as king of the Kolis. <laughs> so I am now seeing a scenario where hmm. a lot of the votes that traditionally voted for the hmm. Congress. See hmm. what was unstated. This election is a lot about the unstated facts of Gujarat. Hmm. Hmm. You always knew that the BJP had banked on party dars, but of hmm. the calm that the Congress banked on, the largest social group was Kolis, which were numerically strong, almost as strong as the party dars. Hmm. Now the AP has directly all across Saurashtra tried hmm. to take those. 
only votes. Hmm. So now first, as you said, if it does not reach a threshold, it's only harming the Congress. Hmm. However, if the AP manages to cross a threshold, then actually it means it has got a, a, a spring in its feet with these Kohli voters, then it's adding the other voters of the BJP, then it starts becoming a threat to the BJP. Also. Absolutely. And then then, then there is... a perfect bellwether seat to watch that out. Actually. Porbandar and as well as Viswadar. Because Viswadar yeah. used to be a strong BJP seat when Keshubhai Patel was around. And then of, of yeah. course, after Keshubhai, BJP still held it. Then Keshubhai won it back, you know, with a strong Leva Patel population in Viswadar. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then, then, then BJP has Last not been able to... Yeah. Both 2014, the by-election, as well as 2017, the BJP was yeah. not able to win. So this is yeah. this is this is very very interesting. Again, so we'll have to see how Junagad uh, votes. So I mean, you are talking about some very fascinating scenarios that are coming. One thing is for sure that the BJP. I mean, you know, whatever we may say right now and and analyze and stuff anecdotally as well as you know numbers and what we've talked to the ground bjp still remains the de facto party of governance the whole right. debate is that if it goes down from 99 or if you add the bipoles if it goes down from like i say 110 or 111, 111, 111 um what number will it go down to and no, the fact oh, See, there is a news 24 story uh, now, hmm. again, it's an alleged story because even the news channel attributes it to somebody, right? So, I, I will go with all the disclaimers. It's an alleged right, story. Right, of course. Which says yeah. that uh, the BJP has told its workers that there's an internal survey or maybe hmm. there's a leaked survey which says that hmm. if the AP goes beyond 10% of the vote, there are 19 hmm. seats that they're going to take from us. Hmm. Okay, that's the AP is going to take from the BJP. Hmm. Which means... If you subtract 111 minus 90, you're looking at 92, the perfect hard halfway mark. Mm. Right Now to that, of course, there are going to be some seats added, which the BJP should get from the Congress because of the AAP splitting their vote. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. again, the story goes back to the same thing. If the mm. AAP's ability to chew votes mm. is secular in the sense that it's harming both the Congress and the BJP, mm. then mm. the BJP easily looks at a 90 plus or 100 plus some tally that keeps it safe. Mm-hmm. Right? But if it is somewhat equally spread or more spread, mm. you know, in favor against one party, mm. yeah, then it starts upsetting maybe the BJP pushing it towards early 90s, something else, a tantalizing mm. number, right? Mm. So mm. that's a distinct watch out possibility for the BJP. Yeah, so this is split proportion, it can be 120, 125. But if the split proportion now changes, this current projection of 120, 125 is like, uh, you know, what you would call the best on the production possibility frontier in economics at the top. <laughs> now, yes. beyond that, anything starts producing suboptimal results. But now, and so now we are not looking at 140, though. 140 is impossible. I, I personally feel that the Congress would retain some of its strongholds. Hmm. The AP would be in a certain number of seats. Hmm. I will still say, okay, a 10%, 15% chance is 140, where both these parties get stuck at 2020. See, it's the first pass of post system. You True. really can't say anything. You know, Absolutely. in a first pass of post system, if your vote is uniformly spread and you're the loser, you're a uniform loser. <laughs> Agree with so, you. So, so if both Congress and AP turn out to be uniform losers, it's party time for the BJP. So hmm. 140. Hmm. However, hmm. Even if one of them doesn't turn out to be a uniform loser, then hmm. the tally starts going down. Then it really starts so going that's down. That's the BJP's way of maybe keeping its own cadre activated as well. That look, you know, we'll go down from 111 if that uniform loser phenomenon goes away. Hmm. So. So it's, it's 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 that is the round uh, the uh, the picture, right? So yeah. let's 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 look at the let's look at the the basically the history of Gujarat elections, right? Little bit, and then we'll switch to a little bit about Himachal, and then we'll wrap up this week's podcast. The history of Gujarat elections is very interesting. This is the first trifecta elections where we are talking about three parties since 1990s. I don't consider 2012 as a three party elections because you had Gujarat Parivartan party which was relevant uh, which was relevant in two and a half seats and uh, was talked about for like uh, I don't even think uh, Suresh Mehta talks about Gujarat Parivartan party as much as the news channel talked about about it Suresh Mehta is now busy publishing books and writing books (laughs) 
अच्छा सही है इट्स हाँ सो देर इज दिस वंडरफुल सीन इन द वेस्ट विंग वेयर द द द लॉयर द सोलिसिटर जनरल आई फेट हु इट वॉज बट इज अ लॉयर कैरेक्टर दैट ही फायर्स टू एम्प्लॉयज इन देन इज लाइक इट्स टाइम फॉर यू टू राइट योर बुक नाउ यू नो सो दैट इज एट दिस वॉज रिटन अबाउट ट्वेंटी वन ईयर्स अगो सो दैट्स हाउ ब्रिलियंटली दैट सीन वॉज बाय एर एन सॉर्किन एंड आई थिंक इट्स स्टिल रेलिवेंट नाउ दैट वंस यू लूज रेलिवेंस इन द पोलिटिकल स्टैंडिंग इट इज टाइम टू राइट start writing books or of course if you are in politics and you want to keep writing about it so i mean yeah. you know the jokes apart though um uh, but yeah so i mean this is the first election post 1990 but even 1990 the bjp and janata dal were in alliance at that time no 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 that's a very interesting election the in 1990 is actually i would say in our living memory your generation and my generation mm-hmm. that is mm-hmm. the first triangular election mm-hmm. okay so bjp and janata dal were uh, the bjp was supporting the vp singh government from outside mm. at the center mm. and in gujarat and rajasthan both the states the elections were simultaneous march 1990 mm-hmm. they could not come to an understanding mm. so in both the state they went for friendly fights the bjp right. went for several friendly fights in gujarat i i, I just mm. need to check the numbers but it certainly contested 130 plus of the 182 mm. so did the janata dal mm. uh, the contest was actually very close mm. uh, janata dal was luckier by 3 seats janata dal mm. got 70 bjp got 67 bjp got 67 correct yeah. mm. the vote shares are still more interesting are they mm. congress got 33 the janata dal mm. got 30 and the bjp got 27 <laughs> yeah it was actually the perfect triangular election ha huh. perfect triangular absolutely uh, congress actually got 31 so 30.7 janata dal huh. 29.3 and bjp got 26.6 रूलिंग पार्टी वॉज द कांग्रेस देन एंड इट गॉट 30 point what is the vote share 30 point 30 point 30 point six and that was also coincidentally w- one of the last times that uh, the last time that uh, B- bjp had lost telis bridge uh, where where babu bhai vasanwala won you know old uh, an old old hand in our societies and stuff like that people knew him for yeah. a long time narhari yeah. amain wins in sabarmati so you have yeah. all these uh, old old seats like right now we think that they are completely safe seats for uh, bjp that actually go to janata dal because they are traditionally anti congress seats right but at that yeah. time i think they went to the local face or whoever was uh, would do and then of course you know uh, the whole chiman bhai patel situation happens right, right. absolutely absolutely So, so from there, let's talk to what then. Chiman Bhai Patel comes in. Chiman Bhai Patel then takes uh, takes over as the CM. Then the yeah. whole post nineteen ninety one split happens, and 1990. then Chiman Bhai Patel forms an alliance with his old friends in the Congress. And I think essentially he he joined the Congress, if I'm not mistaken. So, so what happens is initially hmm. in the immediate aftermath of the withdrawal of support by hmm. the Bharatiya Janata Party, hmm. there is a Janata Dal Gujarat which is created. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. and of the 70 four mla stay back in the old janata dal the 66 go to janata dal gujarat which is timan bhai mm. janata mm. okay mm. and bjp gets the moral authority to be the single largest party it has one seat more than jdg the mm. 67 mm. jdg and 66 so that mm. gave you know, like oh yeah we call her up we are the single largest party the single largest world. party and the leader of opposition now leader of opposition and uh, keshubhai patel becomes the leader of opposition the janata dal gujarat runs a government with the congress Hmm. uh and uh, uh, uh the, this janata dal gujarat remained a separate entity for some time till i think 92 or something okay hmm. uh, after which uh, vp singh has himself given up politics hmm. right so before much before that time uh, janata dal gujarat merges with the congress hmm. uh, it becomes uh, uh, you know uh, officially there's one block for congress now Mr mm. Patel himself passes away Mr Mehta becomes the chief minister Chavil Das Mehta yes uh, Chavil Das Mehta and he is the person who leads the congress into the election in 1995 
Yes, this is this is and, and this has actually been so people forget this has actually been the the history of Gujarat in a yeah. in a, in the most insane fashion. Any so let me just guys tell you what has happened in Gujarat since the history. You know, Jivraj Mehta ke baad uh, in two years, then you had the advent of Balwantrai Mehta who. Uh, strangely enough, also became one of the first, if not the first, chief minister to be assassinated by a Pakistani air force missile in 1965. And read about you know what Balwant Rai Mehta, uh, you know, uh, uh, faced and stuff. So you had Jivraj Mehta, Balwant Rai Mehta, then Hitendra Desai, whose whose role in during you know the whole riots and the whole situation that Indira Gandhi and Hitendra Desai controversy happened. I would read yeah. about that. Then you had the president's rule. Then Gansham Bhai Oza, which even the Congress has forgotten about. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, they don't talk about Mr. Gansham Oza. Then, yeah. you know, after that, you had, um, uh, I mean, you had Chiman Bhai Patel coming in. Then another pres- another kiss of president's rule because under Chiman Bhai Patel is where the whole uh, Nav Nirman agitation started and the whole which led to the emergency and so forth. Then Babu right. Bhai Patel comes in uh, right. from the uh, Congress. Oh, then Madhosi Solanki. Again, Babu Bhai Patel from Janta Party. Again, Solanki. Then Amar Si Chaudhary. Then Madhosi Solanki again. <laughs> then again, Chiman Bhai Patel in the 1990 po- post waves. Um, and then Chabil Das Mehta. And then the BJP comes in with Keshu Bhai Patel. So, yeah. You know, it has been a incredibly, and, and you have seen this strongman, a weak, a sort of weak, sort of uh, succeeded by that. So, Chivan Bhai, yeah. Uske Baad Chabil Das, then Keshu Bhai, then Suresh Mehta, Shankar Sivagela, yeah. Dilip Parikh. Yeah. Dilip Parikh. But, yeah. Very but new then, Dilip Parikh, haan, yeah. Dilip Parikh, right? So, then you have Keshu, Dilip Parikh was the same for like 188 days, six months. And then yeah. you have Keshu Bhai Patel. And then the history of Gujarat changes and Mr. Narendra Modi comes. It's October who, 2000, Mr. Modi takes over. Modi yeah. takes over for, you know, 12 years and 227 days. After which, of course, yeah. it's Anandi Bain, Vijay Bain. But that is the history of Gujarat. That is the history of the electoral politics of Gujarat. That before Mr. Modi, I don't think I, yeah. I ever recall a CM having come back winning mr modi was the first person to do it twice or thrice but usse pehle, i really don't remember if a cm actually came back and won his mandate ever in the history of gujarat no, you have to view this a little bit differently yeah uh, gujarat has been a traditional anti congress state <laughs> yes AFP, truly even before jay prakash narayan started the call hmm. now nirman movement had started in gujarat correct this before the janta party hmm. Right? Hmm. so it's a state which where the anti-Congress vote has been looking for a platform of stability for itself. Hmm. Hmm. We are anti- all these social blocks are anti-Gujarat. That's why hmm. I remember in 1990 also, hmm. the JD and the Gujarat, uh, BJP fought separately both in Gujarat and Rajasthan. Hmm. In spite of friendly fights, the mandate was overwhelmingly anti-Congress in Gujarat, not as much in Rajasthan. Hmm. In Rajasthan, the Congress hmm. still had to MLAs. In hmm. Gujarat, out of 182, it was reduced to 33. Correct. In spite of only fights between the JD and the BJP. Hmm. Right? Which means the canvas was largely anti-Congress. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. The Bharti Janta Party success has been that it hmm. has given that anti-Congress canvas one platform which is stable. Hmm. That is the success of Bharti Janta Party. Hmm. So, even in 1998, Hmm. That all across India in 80s and 90s, the default pattern was that if an opposition government collapsed in the next midterm poll, the Congress would come back. Hmm. Gujarat broke that pattern in 1998. There was, it was a hmm. midterm poll. Let's hmm. remember that. Hmm. The, the Dilip Pari and Shankar Singh Vagela could not carry forward. Truly. Right? But in the midterm poll, the Congress doesn't come back. <laughs> like hmm. all the other states, the BJP comes back. Hmm. And Keshava is actually the he is like a chief minister. You can't directly say he's won another term, but it's a midterm poll which should have favored the Congress. But this man comes back as chief minister. Hmm. So I would rather just broaden what you're saying a little bit. Hmm. The BJP gave that anti-Congress aspiration of Gujarat a stable political platform. Fascinating. So that's the reason they would always keep coming. 
keep coming back great points and we'll probably you know com- converge again to talk about that for sure but before i let you go jay five minutes we have to talk about himachal elections you know not yeah. much we we promised our viewers we would as well uh, yeah. so himachal has had uh, uh, himachal's already voted by now and we are not going to you know violate the code of conduct and talk about any exit polls and stuff but himachal has traditionally been a swing state you know wo revolving door government ki har har saal har time pe government badalti hai but this time what was uh, bjp is looking to buck the trend and win win again uh, this is the first election where they'll go without mr dhumal last time as people might recall bjp won but mr dhumal lost his seat prem kumar dhumal yeah and stuff and um bjp has had a lot of tribe uh, the um the rebels 20 plus rebels actually fighting uh, this time so how do they deal with that right you have 68 seats and 35 yeah. needed for majority right 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 so i i personally feel that uh you know the smaller the indian states like goa uttarakhand mm. himachal mm. uh, the rebel factor actually becomes that much more important and crucial mm. because one is the constituency is smaller mm. there are leaders available a plenty to take up tickets absolutely so uh, uh see uh, in 1998 a very side fact which few people may recollect hmm. uh, our our prime minister at the time was then the bjp in charge of himachal pradesh hmm. and he mobilized a small tribe called the gaddi voters to vote for the bjp and he also post poll post poll mm. mobilized the sukram congress to come up with the bjp otherwise the congress Correct. had almost bucking the anti incumbency trend then absolutely so they, they yeah and, and mr shanta kumar became actually the again this was also first non congress because shanta kumar first make the cm in uh, 1977 after yeah. the emergency and then yeah. you know you had the once again okay. shanta kumar the Correct. bjp is routed in the 1993 midterm poll and mm. 98 it's a very narrow comeback it's a very shallow majority mm, mm, right mm, very so shallow my point is historically it's been possible to repeat an incumbent government mm. the congress narrowly did not make it in 98 the bjp can also make it again right but just like small shift voters and yeah. a small number of rebel candidates can upset the apple cart they yeah. they, they can do so again basically absolutely See, history is testimony I- And, and actually, ha, you, no, no, you're right. I was just going to add something that BJP and Congress actually won the same number of seats, thirty-one and thirty-one. But I think they yeah. had a di- di- alliance with the uh, Himachal Vikas Congress. Post poll, the BJP did it post poll. Post, no, nee, no. Nee, then, then for 1999 Vidhan Sabha, uh, Lok Sabha, so they had a pakka uh, yes, alliance they, they with them. Yes, they gave the Mandi seat to Sukram. The Sukram. one Mandi seat given to Sukram. Yeah, yeah, and and he swept it basically. He swept it. He swept it. He swept it. Mm-hmm. so so then 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 we, so rebels, going back to rebels i think ah, one of the most uh, you know uh, stinging memories from history for rebels mm-hmm. for the bjp especially in himachal mm-hmm. is 1993 mm-hmm. midterm poll mm-hmm. i mean uh, this was a poll after the babri masjid demolition many people expected bjp across all the four states to do well mm-hmm. in fact if the delhi was a fifth state added the slogan used to be Uh, I still remember very well. The slogan used to be "Aaj Panch Pradesh Kal Sara Desh." You know. Oh so, wow! Okay. You see, Himachal, uh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and then. Uh, and so they only did I'm, well in uh, Delhi and UP. They did well in Delhi. They did well in UP. They scraped through in Rajasthan. They lost Madhya Pradesh narrowly. However, hmm. Himachal was the most stinging story that time, and it was exactly the same factor that you mentioned: rebels. Hmm, rebels. The Congress won fifty-one on sixty-eight. Hmm. The BJP shocking was a. Tally was a shocking paltry eight seats, and eight. there were eight rebels from the BJP who had won. Oh wow! So that that's a reminder of how crucial rebels can be in a state like Himachal Pradesh. Hmm. So, but this so this time I think no one no one no political pundit worth their salt is trying to uh, predict Himachal Pradesh. I think it's yeah. it's it it yeah. it could go anywhere. And twenty seventeen right. uh, was a fascinating election where everyone was expecting Mr. Dhumal would. 
win but he lost the seat of sujanpur which is actually a part of um, uh, hamirpur where arun anurag thakur his son is the sitting lok sabha mp so it's right. <clears throat> surprisingly shocking that they lost but yeah. so 20 uh, 2000 2022 we have to see ki what yeah. uh, what they do and yeah. <clears throat> so do you expect any surprises this time or do you think i mean i personally think it's an election too close to call and anyone saying uh, saying otherwise is essentially not you yeah, know it's, it's being an election too close to call i would say that mm-hmm. himachal is an election too close to call. i think rebels have really added a lot of spice factor to it so it's an election mm-hmm. too close to no, call. I, and here even though aap is fighting in 69 seats i don't think aap is a factor as much as people think it is in you know in gujarat aap, especially aap by its own admission has given up himachal <laughs> given up himachal exactly abhi 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 wo mcd aur gujarat himachal where is it on the map we are only saying gujarat it's aap is like that arjun gujarat and mcd mcd let's let's not forget mcd Yeah. They are, they, they really so, uh, those are the only two fishes AP is seeing. The rest they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> fascinating points but you know i think uh, that 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 sums up the whole detail about gujarat and himachal uh, you know thank you so much jay i think this has thank been a truly enlightening thing before we go any recommendations you have for our listeners viewers uh, no i i i i think uh, 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 i i wouldn't have recommendations i would have sort of uh, you know caveats sort of to say yeah go through all the content on youtube but it a lot of it is really tendentious you really have to apply your mind after going through the mm. content to mm. figure out what is news you know about the election mm. everybody has put up there are fabricated polls there are absolutely you know perfectly stitched shots of videos to propagate mm. a particular party mm. uh, for the first time adit i have felt that i have had to tax myself to unearth the truth yeah news. true you know, I, <laughs> i gujarat i mean i i i i love my state and i love you know traveling through it and you know you observing the trend and stuff 2017 i had set the trend like i i sort of traveled through it in february march and i almost knew what was happening in december from march itself and everything was just lining up to that that's why i gave the number 95 to 105 to the bjp yeah, this yeah. time i was in gujarat a lot before that right yeah. uh, a lot after that and like with, before like two months three months four months before the election right. and i can right. tell you no one is no one knows you know no who is no one is no. not even sure a lot of people who are saying if you have confidence you might be basically just doing bs because yes politicians have to politicians have to show the confidence i'm not talking about politicians but if you are an analyst if you're true to your field there is no concept of surety in this election because there are moving parts on a daily basis and if you don't if you don't think that's true then you know why is mr the prime minister doing so many rallies because he understands like he knows that the bjp is in a winning position but a five seat or a 10 seat gain for mp could be bad news for bjp in the future become a cliffhanger. cliffhanger and then it becomes you know then can will the ap get national party status who knows right so it's it's it's, it's a very uh, uh, cross if, if it crosses that vote share so very crucial election and mr modi and mr shah may want to make sure that you know they don't have any challenges but it, it's 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 interesting we'll be here we'll, we'll be here to do the you know the post uh, election results discussion we'll have a detailed show for you but uh, Jai, thank you again for your time on Gujarat Hi. and Himachal. This has truly been a stunning discussion. We'll we'll be back, guys, with more next week. Please like, share, subscribe on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Please follow Jai. Please write, tell us what you thought about this, and uh, you know, look to see you on um, next week with the new topics. Till then, it's goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Pleasure.